Hit the music. Okay. <laughs> you know what show it is. You hit the button. Hi, Andre. That's Steve. Hey, how you doing? Hi. Now, um, I don't really f think I can actually go back and get uh, the zap to it now. So, let's go to Steve for the show. Let's do a quick one. Okay, let's uh, do it. And let's do it to, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's do a quick one. Okay. Here's how quick we're going to do it. Good night, everybody. No. All right. Thank, thank you very much for your self-indulgence. Okay, folks. Uh, allow me to pop up the Toonami Faithful and uh, then get you some wrestling news. And then, bonsoir, 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 mon ami. That's so here we go, here we go, here we go, go, go with a little Toonami news. Oh, yeah. No Toonami news. Let's do this like we've never seen before. Oh, yes. And are you ready for this? Um, Ace Attorney, Season 1. I never even knew it was an anime until just 10 seconds ago, kids. Excuse me. But here we go. For those who are huge fans of Ace Attorney, the uh, video game, I'm not sure how you feel about the anime. While I've always wanted an anime adaptation of the video game, the effort A1 Pictures put forth could have been better. Although I was glad to see the studio stay faithful to the video game, the animation and swiftness of the series limited the overall enjoyment of the author. Still, Ace Attorney, Phoenix Wright, and Justice for All made one nostalgic. And if you're unfamiliar with the world of Ace Attorney, the world has a swift judicial process where accused people have three days to be proven innocent. Prosecutors will do whatever it takes to get a guilty verdict, and even if there might be evidence to the contrary, these prosecutors continue to do what they can to win the case. Phoenix Wright has just become a defense attorney after having been saved by one when he was a kid. And now he will do whatever he can to help justice prevail and send those who committed heinous crimes to prison. The first half of this release tells a story from the first Ace Attorney video game. The last half of the season adopted the second video game, Justice for All. However, not all of Justice for All was shown in this release. We see the second turnabout involving a doctor, Dr. Turner Gray, who wants to speak with his former nurse who died instead of the first case that took place in the game. I'm not sure why the enemy decided to skip the first case, especially since this case has been praised for being so faithful to it. So not being able to hang out with Phoenix, Maya, and the rest of the cast was uh, tough to swallow how the anime makers believed it made more sense since the second case from Justice for All starts with Maya back in her hometown after leaving Wright's office, but I wish that A1 Pictures had stuck to the original story. And yes, fans, you'll still get to see the remaining cases from the game as Maya is once again framed for the murder of Dr. Turner Gray. Dun, dun, dun. He had wanted to do a spirit channeling, which Maya was to perform, in order to talk to his former nurse after his reputation was ruined. Dr. Gray wished to contact the nurse after he was investigated for medical malpractice. She died in a car crash, and a young woman convic convinced the doctor to try to spirit channeling to clear his name. Phoenix then finds out the young woman who talked the doctor into this was actually the nurse who supposedly died, Mimi Minnie. Under stress and exhausted, Minnie lost control of her car and killed her younger sister. What makes this case incredibly difficult is that Maya's aunt, Morgan Fay, was also in on a plot to lock Maya up for good and for her daughter to take their rightful place as the family's head. Um, story continues. The animation didn't improve, sadly, which hurt the viewing experience. 
I'm surprised that uh, the author preferred watching the video game more than the anime, and while it wasn't terrible, it was disappointing how poorly it looked, given how popular Ace Attorney is, not having smoother animation is somewhat of a downer. Now, you are probably going to ask who will be doing Ace Attorney. The answer, Funimation. Let's give you the cast... Shall we? Oh, I think we shall. Let's give you a little bit of the cast info. Uh, Mr. Massey, as now this is from the um, uh, Twitter page of uh, at Steve Yurko. Uh, Mr. Massey as Dick Gumshoe, Josh Martin voice as Larry Butts, Carol Beard as Mia Fey. On the first release, Jenny or uh, Jeannie Tirado is April May. What? There's no one named June July. Uh, Kara Edwards is Cody Hackins. Suzanne Sando is D Vasquez. Kent Williams is Judge. Bill Jenkins is Manfred von Karma. Very nice. And that's the Funimation East Attorney Dubcast. Uh, the English dub sounds great, and the casting fit the characters well. Some viewers might be surprised to hear the localized names in the anime, since Funimation hardly ever does that. But uh, people like Eric Vale, Lindsay Sidel, Christopher Wayne Camp, and a few others. Uh, Funimation include a few extras, such as an English episode, commentaries, and two blooper reels. So if... Uh, you don't want to get to see it. Uh, do so. It's probably on the Funimation website. Or, of course, you can order Ace Attorney through, again, Funimation's website. There we go. Okay, it is 11.13. We're going to just give you one more bit of Toonami news. And then we'll go straight to the... Um, we'll go straight to wrestling. Uh, let's see. Viz Media confirmed the broadcast partners for Yashami, Princess Half Demon. We'll give you those broadcast partners right now, dear folk. Uh, Crunchyroll and uh, Funimation Now and Hulu, October 3rd, 2020. It will be shown to North American and Latin American territories. Viz Media also mentioned that an English dub will follow shortly after the, uh, obviously, the Japan. Uh, the original language broadcast. So, um, and I have a feeling it will be on Adult Swim in the very distant future. Okay, well, after last night's stunning, if not stirring, a fun loving, uh, fun fiesta. Of the Clash of Champions, let's see if Raw picked up the pace a little bit, or do they still have a problem? Okay, let's go to it. Uh, as you know, we skip the BS and go straight for the grist of the grill. The Raw women's title match began. Zelina Vega took on Azuka. Uh, Azuka won. Uh, Andrade took on Keith Lee. Keith Lee won. He's hit big, big, big arse push. And let's see what we got here. Uh, Natalia and Lana took on Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. And Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke won. Nice, isn't it? Kevin Owens took on Aleister Black. And Kevin Owens won a DQ. The triple threat for the WWE 24-7 title, Drew Gulak versus Akira Tozawa versus R-Truth. R-Truth won that one. Uh, Dominic Mysterio took on Murphy. Who won that? Murphy! The Hurt Business took on Mustafa Ali, Apollo Crews, and Ricochet. But... Oh, 
well, Retribution, well, at least the names, the logos displayed all over the arena and the Thunderdome uh, were showing, but no such luck, Chuck. But the distraction was enough for Mustafa Ali, Ricochet, and Apollo Crews to win. Then we had the WWE title match, Robert Roode versus Drew McIntyre. Do we need to tell you who won that one? Yep, Drew McIntyre. Uh, Orton uh, was walking. And, uh, well, let's put it this way. Uh, after the match, music hits. Just Drew sits up on the mat, clutches the title. We go to replays. Drew stands tall in the middle of the ring, has his arm raised now. The camera goes backstage, and we see the janitor from earlier, the one MVP threw the water bottle at and told him to pick it up. The janitor, who had his face covered, pulls a steel chair off his cart. He walks over to the Legends Lounge. The janitor shows his face, and it's Randy Orton. He put on a pair of night vision goggles, enters the room with the chair. We see Orton entering the room as the legend are sitting at their poker table. Orton turns the lights off, and it sounds like he's destroying everyone with steel chair shot. Orton turns the lights back and pulls his goggles up. We see Ric Flair, Big Show, Christian, Shawn Michaels all laid out. The room has been destroyed. Orton exits the room and goes back to his cart. High in his face again. Officials come running over to the Legends Lounge, and Orton points them in the right direction. With his face still covered, Orton walks away, pushing the janitor's cart as Raw goes off the air. Yeah. So that's what happened in Raw. Remember when we give you Raw or anything else, we cut the BS and go straight for the results, etc. By the way, a backstage creative note for tonight's Raw uh, episode. Here it is. Uh, it was a hectic show as far as creative went. It was reported by at WrestleVotes that a majority of the talent working tonight's show just learned what they'll be doing less than an hour before the show started. Shortly after 5 p.m. Eastern, late scripts and changes seem to be the norm these days. Of course, it's under Vince McMahon. What the hell? But it's interesting to note that wrestlers weren't told what their plans are for tonight's show until around three hours before showtime. Tonight's show is face, uh, face some uh, significant sports competition. The 2-0 Ravens took on the 2-0 Kansas City Chiefs in the Monday Night Football game on ESPN. And it was the Tampa Bay Lightning and the Dallas Stars for the Stanley Cup Game 6 live from the bubble in Edmonton, which ended, and we want to congratulate the Tampa Bay Lightning on winning their second Stanley Cup. Huzzah. So, uh, there you go. There it is. There it was. It will never always be so. Uh, let's see, do we have anything else possibly going on? Any, uh, AEW little events? Oh, there's this little, uh, there's this little Bon Mott. And maybe this will have an effect on, uh, this little story here. The Wall Street Journal has a story. Regarding NBC Universal, which owns the USA Network as well as Bravo, E, Oxygen, and Sci Fi, reportedly overhauling its entertainment division. Can we go back up, fellas? Thank you. Um, uh, to focus more on video streaming and less on cable. Uh oh. As previously reported, both NBC Universal and Warner Media, which owns TNT, have made major changes in cuts in early as the companies have pivoted to streaming. The changes at Warner Media are prioritizing the HBO Max streaming service, while the reorganization at NBC Universal comes as the company is focusing on their streaming service, Peacock. Now, AEW lost a major supporter after Kevin Riley was let go from Warner Media in August, while WWE lost an ally earlier this month after Chris McCumber was let go by NBC Universal earlier this month. McCumber reportedly spearheaded the latest negotiations between the WWE and NBC Universal, which led to their current big money TV deal. It was noted that 
a lot of the cable executives are being let go are not having their positions refilled. Now, despite cable sales generating $11.5 billion of NBC Universal's overall $34 billion, Wall Street no- Journal noted that E, Oxygen, and Sci-Fi don't have a long-term future. NBC used cable stations, including USA, Bravo, E, Sci-Fi, have each lost more than 10 million subscribers since 2014. NBCU issued a statement to the journal without mentioning the specific network, stating, quote, NBC Universal Cable Networks carry some of the most popular programming in the industry and are enormously profitable. They will continue to be a valuable part of our portfolio for fans, advertisers, and our shareholders. Now, Kevin Riley, who is responsible for bringing AEW Dynamite to TNT, told The Hollywood Reporter in August that it's the great reckoning now regarding the changes in the industry. Both WWE and AEW are unlikely to be affected in the short term as both companies have many years on their existing deals. The landscape of the TV industry as a whole, well, when those deals expire, it's anyone's guess as to what comes next. Brain, as they say, it's a whole new world out there. What happens next? Hardly anyone knows. But that's it. That's it for our uh, wrestling and anime and everything else in review. Once again, congratulations to the Tampa Bay Lightning in their second Stanley Cup. Brain, that's it. That's right, man. I'll try it again. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for listening. See you next time. Or maybe hear you next time. Listen to it. I don't know. Figure it out. <laughs> yep. Bye. We're done. Okay, I will see. I will.